In this video, you'll learn how to create an animation commonly referred to as exploded views. In the animation, you'll learn how to change the viewpoint, transform the components, play the animation. When the animation is complete, you'll learn how to publish a video and how to create a drawing of the animation. I want to start off with giving a quick introduction to animations. Let's first discuss where animations can be used. They can be used to show others the intent of the assembly, to show how components will be assembled, and maintenance documentation. When creating an animation, only components can be transformed. If you have bodies in your design that need to be transformed, they will need to be converted to components. And as I mentioned, when the animation is complete, you can create a video and create a drawing. Next, I want to go over some terminology. When you enter the animation workspace, at the lower left-hand corner of your screen is the storyboard area. The storyboard contains all the information for one animation. By clicking on the plus symbol, you can create a new storyboard. You can also copy a storyboard and you can reverse a storyboard. Usually the first storyboard that you create shows how the components will be disassembled. You can copy that storyboard and reverse it. By reversing the storyboard, you'll show how the components will be assembled. The section at the bottom of the canvas is called the animation timeline. Here you can review the actions and also modify the actions. In the animation timeline, the downward pointing arrow is referred to as the playhead. The playhead shows the time that an action takes place. You can also move the playhead to set when an action stops. Now inside of Fusion 360, I wanna create an animation. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under the design dropdown and I'm gonna click on animation. Now in the animation workspace, notice in the lower left-hand corner, storyboard one was automatically created. I'm gonna rename that, so I'm gonna double click on it and enter the name disassemble. Next, I'm gonna set the playhead to two seconds. Next, I'm gonna change my viewpoint and the animation will stop at two seconds. I'm gonna start up the orbit tool. I'm just gonna rotate my viewpoint a little bit and zoom back a little bit. At the bottom of the screen, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna play the animation. So I'm gonna set it at the beginning and play it. The viewpoint change was completed in two seconds. Next, I'm gonna move the playhead to four seconds. Next, I'm gonna move the bolts, and again, that animation will stop at four seconds. Note that the tools in the transform menu are used to move and control component visibility. To start off with, I'm just gonna use the transform components tool, shortcut letter M. The first thing I need to do is select the bolts. I could do that within the canvas, or you can do it within the browser. That's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna expand the browser until I see my components. Then I'm gonna click on the first bolt, hold down the shift key and select the last one. That will select all of them. In the dialog box, I'm gonna turn on the trail visibility. The next thing I need to do is move the bolts up. However, the animation timeline is blocking my view. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize it. Then in the canvas, I'm gonna grab the arrow that's pointing down and I'm gonna pull it up, show that the bolts are gonna move upward. And again, you can type in a specific value or you can just get it close so it looks good. Now you can click OK in the dialog box or press Enter. Now I want to play the animation. So here I'm going to expand the animation timeline. And again, I'm going to start at the beginning and play it forward. What I want to do next is adjust when the bolts start their transformation. To do this, I'll first select the four transformations for the bolts in the animation timeline. Now I'll change when the transformations start. To do this, I'm gonna move my cursor over one of the left edges and left click and drag. You can also edit these actions by doing a right click. And here you can change the duration, the start time, align the end times, and select actions before or after the selection. Next, I'll transform the pin. So again, from the transform menu, I'm gonna come up here and click on transform components. I'm gonna select the pin. And again, I'm gonna turn on my trail visibility and select the arrow and pull the pin out. To complete the transformation, I'm just going to press Enter. Down in the timeline, I'm just going to scroll down. In the animation timeline, I didn't set the playhead forward for that second animation to stop. So here you can see that all five components are moving at the exact same time. To preview the animation, you can also click and drag on the playhead and drag it left and right. What I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to grab the transformation for that pin, and I'm just going to drag it forward. And again, I'm going to edit the stop time. Now dragging the playhead, you can see that the pin moves independently. Next, I'm gonna set the time to 10 seconds. 
Next, I'll move the clevis, and I'm going to start the Transform Components tool by clicking the M key on the keyboard. I'm going to select my clevis. And in the dialog box, again, I'm going to turn on Trail Visibility. And I'm also going to turn on the option to split transforms. What this option does, every time you let go of your left mouse button, it will create a separate action. To start, I'm going to drag the clevis out. And then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And then I'll do one more move, moving it into the screen. And then finish the command. Going down into the timeline, I'm going to scroll down. And here you can see the actions for the clevis. First, I'll edit when the transformation starts. Now I'll review the animation by clicking and dragging on the playhead. And again, you can see now that the clevis starts moving out. And near the end, it's going to do the rotation and the movement at the exact same time. Next, I want to shorten the duration of that first move. So again, the second option to do this is right click on it, click on duration, and enter a value. For this animation, I want to have the rotation and that last transformation move be separate. To do this, I'm going to start off by clicking and dragging on that rotation action and moving it to the left, and I'll extend its duration. I'll also extend the duration of that last transformation move. Now I'll do a quick review of the animation, again, by clicking on that playhead. You can see that the bolts come up, the pin comes out, the clevis moves out, then rotates, and then moves. The last thing I want to do in this animation is change the viewpoint. So again, I'm going to move my playhead out to 14 seconds, and I'm going to change my view orientation. When playing an animation, you can also go into full screen mode, go down to the bottom of the screen, and click on full screen mode for animation playback. That will hide everything from the screen, and then click on the play button. To exit the full screen mode, just press the escape key. Now I want to create a storyboard that shows how the components will be assembled. To do this, I'm going to make a copy of my disassembled storyboard by right clicking on it and click copy from the menu and then move my cursor back over the storyboard, right click and click paste from the menu. What I like to do is rename my storyboard. So again, I'm going to now double click on my second storyboard and rename this to assembled. To show how the components will be assembled, I'm going to right click on my assembled storyboard and click reverse from the menu. To review this animation, I'm going to click on the play button. If you prefer to turn off the visibility of all the trail lines, select all the components, then right click, and from the menu, click on hide all trail lines. If needed, you can also delete actions. For example, if I want to remove that last viewpoint change, I'm going to go into the timeline and right click on that action, right click, and click delete from the menu. When you're working with multiple storyboards, pay attention to which one is active. And again, to make one active, just select on it in the lower left hand corner of the screen. Now that the animation is complete, I can create a video by coming up here under the publish menu and click on publish video. In the dialog box, you can set the scope for this video. Do you want just the current storyboard? or all storyboards to be included. And you can also set the resolution. And when you're done, go ahead, click OK, and a video file will be created. If you want to create a drawing of this animation, click on the animation drop down arrow, and then click Drawing from Animation. In the dialog box, set which storyboard you want the drawing to be created from, then adjust the drawing options as needed. And then when you're done, go ahead, click OK. Now in the Drawing View dialog box, make changes as needed. The only thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to change the style to shaded, and I'm going to place my view. The last thing I want to do is create a parts list. I'm going to come up here under the Table menu and click on Table. And I'm going to locate my parts list right above the title block. And I'm going to finish up by moving the view slightly. I'm going to click inside the view, and on the middle square, click and drag. If you want to learn more about how to create drawings inside of Fusion 360, please watch our drawing process video. And this completes this video on how to create an animation in Fusion 360. Thanks for watching.